So it's been nearly a year since I started making YouTube videos full time. And since then, I've subverted the glances of judgmental aunties while vlogging, used my college degree to build some questionable Python bots, filmed my coffee routine way too many times, got my first hate comment, and hit 16,000 subscribers. And through it all, I've had one trusty companion by my side, Notion. In fact, I made a video on this app a few months ago, and besides the many comments calling out my very poorly timed intro, a lot of people also want to check out my templates, specifically this content calendar. The setup is great because it's not just for YouTubers. It can be used by writers or digital creators or even students. It's designed to cut out all of the busy work associated with this process and instead give you a highly reproducible yet simple system that helps you get done as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, and this video is not sponsored by Notion, but if you guys are watching... So yeah, in this video, I'm going to be sharing two key features that make this system work, show you how they work together through a demo, and reflect on why the system has worked so well for me over this past year. So yeah, let's get to it. And before we get started, I wanted to point out that this setup was actually inspired by Thomas Frank by a video of his that I watched about a year ago, and I'll link that down below. And while this setup is still somewhat involved, it's a bit simpler than his, mostly because my workflow has fewer steps. So let's start demystifying this content calendar together. So the process of making videos is actually pretty consistent. You always need a title, a thumbnail, a good script, some nice editing, and a description. And with templates, Notion makes this a lot easier by cutting out all of the redundancy associated with this process. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So whenever you have a database, like a table or a Kanban board, you can create templates. They can be customized however you'd like and then can be applied with just one click to any new page that you create. And as you can see, my video template is not too complicated, but each part serves a unique purpose. Let's start off with the tags. So the tags, or as Notion calls properties, represent the video's metadata. And as with much of my setup, I've been constantly refining these as my channel evolves to add things like series names or sponsors. And next, we've got the start here section. So this is a recent addition to my workflow that has quietly transformed my video making game. All this does is remind me to first sit down and think about the big picture and what this video is about. And this is actually harder than it looks. It often takes me more than an hour to take a pretty vague idea and transform it into a catchy title and a unique thumbnail and engaging content that inspires my viewers. And finally, we've got the content section, which is where I spent most of my time. To make this, I first create the header, divider, and nested pages like so. As of now, the research and script pages are blank to give me some flexibility depending on what video I'm making. And the YouTube metadata page just has a blank template for the description section. And now that all of these individual blocks are set up, I just highlight all of the elements like so and drag them to the left until I see a long blue line, which indicates the creation of a new column. Then I just release the contents and there you go, we're all set. So in my first impression series, I often talk about productivity boost and this template right here hits that perfect Goldilocks sweet spot. It's not too complicated where it gets in your way, nor is it too stripped down that you end up wasting time setting up new pages. With this roadmap, I know how to focus my energy and which tasks to complete in which order so I'm never tempted to cut corners, which will probably come to haunt me later on. Now, if we zoom out a little, each of these video pages are stored in this content calendar database. On the surface, this looks pretty simple, kind of like an Excel sheet. But behind the scenes, this is a powerhouse. Each entry is linked to a different page, which, as we saw before, can have nested pages or databases or really anything within it. Here, we have a row for every single video and every single idea I've ever had. That's more than 100 entries, which can be an overwhelming amount of information to ingest. 
Well, the great thing is that we can customize how much and what data we can see. So let me show you how that works. First, we'll need to pick which view we want to see, and there are a couple. First, we've got this table view. This is the most comprehensive and probably the most familiar look and feel to most people. When I'm brainstorming and want to see everything at once, I usually choose this view. There's also this Kanban view, and this essentially uses a particular property, say video status, to create columns. I don't use this very much, but I imagine this would be great if I was working on a team and had many different projects that were running in parallel. And next we've got the calendar view, which is undoubtedly my favorite. And that makes sense since this is a content calendar after all. This gives me at a glance a look at all of the videos I've got slated for the upcoming weeks. And I can easily drag and move around video cards if I want to change their publication date. And lastly, we've got this list view, which is kind of like a stripped down table view. As you can see, this is a lot less distracting visually, which actually seems pretty useful for brainstorming. So let's choose this one and make a brainstorming video list. All right, so as of now, this list has every single video or article that I've ever thought of. So let's narrow down those results a little bit. First, I'll select which properties I want to make visible in this list. Let's keep it simple and just show the category of each video for now. And next, the filter tab will help narrow down which content we want to see by using a combination of AND and OR operators. Here, since we want to make a brainstorming list for YouTube, each entry should probably have a platform equals YouTube, type equals video, and status equals idea. And since we want all of these together, we can join them all with the AND operator. And this is nice because if I want to make the same exact setup for, say, Skillshare courses, I can just duplicate this entire view and update the filters to show platform equals Skillshare instead. And to the far right, we've got this new button. This is what I click to create or update a template, which works across all databases, by the way, not just this particular view. So whenever I update, say, my video template, any new page that I make thereafter will use that new template's formatting. And now that we're in our hypothetical brainstorming session, I can just open this page up and create a new entry for each idea that I come up with. And yeah, that's, that's it. One of the worst feelings when creating anything is not knowing what to make. And there have been way too many times where I would come and sit at my desk on a Monday morning ready to make a video, but I had no idea what to make. This would lead me to spend hours, sometimes even days, just browsing YouTube in search of inspiration. Because writer's block sucks so much, I brainstorm ideas every single week and I plan out my videos weeks in advance. Now with this content calendar, I have a huge backlog of ideas, so I never waste my Mondays racking my brain for ideas. So that was a lot of information. And you're probably thinking, what the heck Harshibar, now we're even more confused. And that's okay, now let's take these two pieces and put them together to see how they work in practice through a demo. Okay, let's start by brainstorming. And of course, brainstorming is an ongoing process, but let's just jot down a couple of extra ideas in our video ideas list. So let's do a... Now let's choose which video to make. How about we do Yogi's adoption story? And before I start planning, I'll quickly set the publication date and double check that everything looks good in the calendar view. And looks like we're good. All right, step two is planning. So now let's enter this page by clicking on the card and applying the video template. And voila, just like that, I got everything that I need. Before doing anything else, I'll quickly fill out these tags and I'll also favorite this page so it's always easy to access. And now we've got a few things to think about before actually writing the script. First, let's brainstorm title ideas. I like to think of at least five or 10 ideas and then I check them on SEO before choosing one that's both catchy but also matches the vibe of the video. I also do the same thing for thumbnail ideas. And now using the title as a North Star of sorts, I'll outline at least three main ideas that I want to convey with this video. 
At this point, this is really starting to resemble a five paragraph essay like from school and I'm not mad about it. And finally, in line with our essay metaphor, I need a thesis statement. This is a message that I want to drive home with the video. I ask myself, what should the viewer want to do after watching this video? What should they learn? So here, even if the video is about adopting Yogi, maybe the takeaway message is about the importance of having a companion, or the impact of big life decisions, or just growing up. Whatever it is, with every section of my video, I can ask myself, how does this tie back to my thesis? Now, most of my time is spent here on my script page. I usually start by copying and pasting my main ideas from the homepage and converting those to headers. And from here, the process is pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things I do to make the script more powerful and easier to navigate. First, I use the backslash TOC command to display a table of contents at the top of the page. This makes it easy to navigate around the script. Or if I'm not feeling table of contents, I can use the backslash TOG command to make toggles for every header. And this is actually something I started using once I discovered Rome. This way, as I film a video, I can toggle the section that I'm recording without being distracted by the clutter of everything else. I'll also probably need some b-roll in this video, which means that instead of seeing me talk face to face, you see a random clip of maybe Yogi and I on a walk, or Yogi playing fetch, or you get the idea. To help me with this, I can add a column to the right of each paragraph with the b-roll shots that I need to either collect or film. And then as I film those shots, I can just cross them out in that column. And I might as well also indicate which parts of my script don't require me talking to the camera and instead just need a voiceover. This makes it so much easier because whenever I see a chunk of this gray text, I can just read it out loud instead of trying to memorize it and talk to the camera. And yeah, using all of those techniques, I've got my script written and a lot of my editing already planned out. So once I am recording, I keep the script up in front of me and toggle open each section as I go. Once I rehearse the script a few times and get a shot that I like, I mark the section as done with a little green check mark to get that little dose of satisfaction to keep on going. And I should note, as I go through every step in this process, I try to update the status of the video accordingly. Since making videos involves quite a bit of effort put up front with not a lot of feedback, even updating this little status indicator is like giving myself a little pat on the back. Now, the home stretch of making this video and also my favorite part is editing. Usually as I edit, I have this YouTube metadata page open. As I find various GIFs, not GIFs, and clips to use in my video, I immediately paste a link to that asset here in the editing effects section. Since copyright rules are no joke, I do this for anything that I take from the internet that isn't royalty free. Many hours later, the editing is done, the thumbnail is done, and I'm almost ready to upload the video. I'll fill out the rest of the description section, copy and paste this into YouTube Studio, do some housekeeping, and voila! The video is scheduled, and finally I can mark this video as done. And just as I'm ready to kick up my feet and relax, this entire process repeats itself again. And of course, some may argue that all of this hullabaloo, all of these templates and setups aren't needed, that just a pen and paper or your notes app would suffice. That might be the case for some, but for me, this workflow helps me keep track of all of these moving pieces and small details that I might otherwise forget. Because at the end of the day, we're all human and it seems impossible to be able to remember every single small thing. And because the fundamental steps of making videos doesn't change by that much, if we can streamline this process, then why not? With anything in life, whether it's a productivity setup or a morning routine, constant iteration is key because it's hard to get everything right from the very beginning. In fact, if we look at the page that I used for my first Notion video, it had so much going on. And I didn't even use 70% of the things on this page, like this, or this, or this. So over time, I cut those out and replaced them with what I actually needed. 
And this is really why this method has worked for me for so long, because I'm constantly stopping myself to reflect on what's working and what's not. And if there's something I can fix or change, I experiment with that to see how I can save myself some time and some energy. So I know that was a lot of information. And if you wanna try out this setup for yourself, I linked the templates down below, one for the video page and one for the content calendar database. And one thing to note is that this probably won't work for you right off the bat. First, because it's built for how my crazy brain works, which is unique to me. And also this is built for the kind of work that I do, which is making these try hard YouTube videos. And all that means is that it'll take a little bit of time to modify the setup for how you work. Maybe you need more structure, or maybe you want to add an inspiration board, or maybe you're a writer or a student and have a completely different workflow, but still need somewhere to keep all of your content in one place. Whatever it is, I hope that this can serve as inspiration to take a look at your own setup, evaluate what works and maybe what doesn't, and see how you can optimize your workflow to make you as productive as possible. So yeah, that's it for today's video. And congrats on making it to the end. I know this was a long one. <laughs> Yeah, I know I am a big Notion fangirl, but I also know that this isn't necessarily the app for everyone. So I wanna know, are you team Notion or do you have another ride or die productivity app? Let me know down below in the comment section. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. To uh, my users, viewers, viewers. Ah.